My name is Martina Evans and Mary Burke's wonderful farm paintings mean a lot to me because even though I grew up in a pub in County Cork and have spent over 30 years in London, my writing is absolutely haunted by County Limerick farms and the voices from those farms. And it's no coincidence that I'm wearing the Limerick County colours today. So my grandmother Elizabeth Cowhey went to Limerick Prison in 1889 for six months. She was only 23 when she and her sister Mary were evicted from the Arden Precon farm in Croke, County Limerick, for their part in the land war. Later, my father was born on this farm, and my first poem is inspired by a letter his brother Tommy, who was in the IRA, wrote from Limerick Prison in 1921 during the truce. Grey Mare, his horse, has been injured and he's very worried about her. And there are wonderful details like where he describes a horse deal going on outside his cell window while they're bringing in the new potatoes. He's looking forward to a grand and glorious peace and of course that's um, not going to happen. A terrible civil war is on its way. Grey Mare, in memory of Thomas Cutter, 1900 to 1979. After the truce, his prison letter was all about his dream about her. Coming first in the mare and brood class in Newcastle West, his bursting pride leading her into the ring with colours up. Afterwards, awake in the cell, his fear for her leg is stronger than his hope for a grand and glorious peace. She was the first one he called on the night of his escape. In the 70s, he was an old fighter, the same age as the century, hook nose, burnt brown eyes, whiskey head, tobacco fingers, yellow riding boots with elasticated sides, morning or evening, wedding or funeral, always on his feet. He'd be ready for her the day she'd come again, drumming her hooves. When my parents got married first, they went to live on a farm called Cluck in Patrick's Well. And I heard that it was haunted because a priest was hung in the yard during penal times. It seemed to have more than its fair share of accidents, but you could probably say that about a lot of farming. And when their dog Johnny died, my older siblings buried him up to his neck, and it gave my mother a terrible shock when she came upon him unexpectedly, because it looked like he'd been decapitated. After leaving Cluck, they went to live on another farm, Capinanti, and then they sold that and emigrated to Australia with their five children. They returned to run the pub in County Cork in 1960, and I was born the 10th child in 1961. Stones. As a child, I craved straight lawns and brick walls, house names like Sorrento and St Anthony, Padua. I loved the neat council flats of pink and blue and yellow. Their lines of washing seemed to flag up sophistication as we passed through the outskirts of Cork. There was nothing pretty or holy about the names of the two farms in our family, Arden Precon and Cluck, the height of the crows and stones. Cluck, the haunted one, was sold, but its stories itched the family, the horse that went mad from a brain hemorrhage, circling and circling around the hawthorn-ringed field, the riding accidents, bodies on the railway tracks, Johnny, the dead dog, the children buried up to his neck. So used to the phantom footsteps on the stairs, they must have thought the dead went on living. Unable to smother his beloved head in earth, they thought Johnny should be able to see and hear and smell, or even bark, which is what my mother thought when she came round the corner, saw him staring at her there, disembodied, a fly-eyed, stone-headed idol, level with the ground.